Hello subscribers and watchers, this is Vibs from SlideNerd here. In this video, we are going to take a look at how fragment transactions work in Android Studio. So just let me show you what I have here. I have a fragment A, which is nothing great, but all the lifecycle methods on attach, create, create view, activity created, pause, stop, destroy view, destroy, and on detach. Now each of these methods has nothing but a log statement that is going to write something on the screen, right? Same way if you go to its layout, which is fragment underscore a dot xml. Here there is nothing great, just a text view with a message which says this is fragment a man. Okay, so now let's go back to fragment b, which is another fragment that I have. Again, the same thing. I have all the lifecycle methods with a log statement inside. You go to its layout again, the same thing. Only a different background color this time. And it says the same thing, saying this is fragment b man. Now going to our main activity. If I go to activity underscore main dot xml I have some buttons over here add a remove a replace a with b add b remove b replace b with a attach a detach a basically it's all the operations that a fragment transaction object supports so each of these buttons has been simply added inside a relative layout by putting up certain constraints and they all have an on click attribute for example if you have the add a button it has an on click saying add a remove a goes to a method called remove a add replace a with b goes to a method called replace a with b and so on and so forth and at the bottom of this complete structure i mean list of buttons i have a linear layout which is empty i've given it an id saying id slash group the reason why this linear layout is empty is because inside this linear layout i'm going to be putting my fragments so when i add them they're gonna go here when i remove something it's gonna be removed from here within the linear layout because remember, fragments added, subtracted, replaced, they are not directly manipulated. They are manipulated with the help of the container inside which the fragments are placed. So most often it's a linear layout or a frame layout or a relative layout inside which you place the fragments and then you replace, modify, swap them. So going back to our main activity, again I have those methods which I just showed you guys. There's nothing inside each method. So let's do our first operation which is add A, adding a fragment from scratch. First thing you need to do is create an object of that fragment. So I'm going to say fragment A, F1 is new fragment A. Now F1 is not a good way to name variables, but for now, let's stick to that. Next, we need a reference to our fragment manager, which I already have created here by saying fragment manager, manager. And then I've said manager is get fragment manager. Now this gives me our fragment manager associated with main activity. Now this is the object through which you perform all the interactions with the fragment. So the next thing you need to do is begin a transaction because adding, removing, replacing stuff takes place with the help of transactions in Android. So I'm going to say manager dot begin transaction. So this is going to give me a transaction object, which is actually a fragment transaction. So now that I have the transaction object, I can do whatever I want. For example, I can say transaction dot add. I'll use the method with three arguments, which says int fragment and string. So what is the first argument the first argument is the id of the layout inside which your fragment should be placed so in our case it is activity underscore main dot xml we want to place our fragment inside this linear layout whose id is id slash group so let's use that id by saying r dot id dot group second argument is the object that you just created that is f1 in our case third argument is a string which you want to provide later you can retrieve the fragment using that string. Now, what do I mean by that? If I say A over here, later I can say something like find fragment by tag and I can pass the same value A and I will actually get a reference to F1. Now, we will see this in action. Don't worry about it. And the most important thing that I need to do is transaction.commit and that's pretty much done. So, let's actually run this part and see if our add method works properly. Okay, so at this point my emulator is up and running and oh my god, that's a very shitty layout we have. If you go to our activity underscore main dot xml, everything actually looked perfect but the problem was the constraints for the relative layout for these two buttons were not properly specified because I simply dragged and dropped the buttons and that just made the way it looked. But here when you see the constraints are not being obeyed properly, you can see exactly what is going on, right? Anyways, I'm not going to change the buttons layout because I've probably done this and shown you guys have to do it in our in my relative layout videos and now let's just test the add a method we say add a and there you go ladies and gentlemen that's our fragment a coming right inside the linear layout that we had with the id group 
So now let's write the code for add B. It will be the same thing. I'm not gonna show you how that's done. We'll simply modify the code for B. All right, so let's discuss how to remove the fragment A. Removing involves pretty much similar series of steps. I'm gonna say manager. First step is to get a reference to fragment transaction. Then I'm gonna say transaction dot remove. Now as you guys notice, it is asking me an object that I wanna remove, which means I have to find fragment A first, which is already added to the screen, right? So if you guys remember, when I added fragment A to the screen, I gave it a tag, this string over here. So I'm gonna use that same string and I'm gonna find that fragment. So I'm gonna say manager dot find fragment by tag. This is gonna give me an object fragment A. Now it's very important that we check if F1 is null or not because let's consider the fact that the user actually clicked the remove button first since no fragment was added before this is going to return null and you don't want to have your app ending into a crash right so we're gonna have an if else condition here by saying if f1 not equals null then only we perform the remove operation by saying transaction dot remove f1 and then we also commit it because it's very important you commit your changes otherwise it's not gonna work so in the else part, I'm going to put a toast message saying toast.make text. So now that this part is covered, let's actually try running this and see how things look. So now let's see, I have my add remove. Now let's see if I call remove A first. It says the fragment A was not added before because the object is null. So we end up in the else condition. But let's see if we add A first that comes here on the screen. Then we say remove A and there you go. It disappears, which means it's working perfectly. Now add B and remove B are going to be the same way, right? So let me replicate the code just for the sake of completion over here. Now let's talk about the replace operation which is replace A with B which means there is already A on the screen. You want to remove that A and you want to put B over there. So that's the idea. So let's again use the same steps by saying manager dot begin transaction. Next we can directly say transaction dot replace. And if you guys notice the three argument method is the one which I'm going to prefer. I'm going to say replace. The first thing it's going to ask me is the ID of the layout inside which the other fragment is contained. So here in our case, if you guys remember, in our activity underscore main.xml, we have our linear layout whose ID is group, right? So I'm gonna use that ID here by saying r.id.group. So the second is the object that I wanna put, which is the new object. Remember, we are not dealing with the old object at all when we talk about the replace method. So the new object is going to be B, right? Because we assume that A is already there. And then we are trying to put B inside fragment B construct fragment B the same way and we can simply add that fragment B over here and also give it a tag right when we are removing it later we will use that tag to remove it right and then the most important thing by saying transaction dot commit so there you go our emulator is running so as I see add a let us also see what is going on in the lock cat so you guys notice the add a instantly calls all the methods of your fragment a by saying on create on create view on activity created on attach and then if i say remove a it's gonna call all the destructive methods of the life cycle right i'm gonna use the unnamed filter zero where we can see everything as you guys notice says on pause on stop on destroy view on destroy on detach so this removes a then we say add b and then we say remove b but here instead of doing that we can directly say replace a with b which is directly going to add fragment now if you say add a a is going to be added here then i say replace a with b this is going to do the action of removing a then putting b in that place and this is how the replace operation works so hopefully you guys are clear about that replace b with a is going to be the, pretty much the same thing so i'm not gonna show you guys how to do that but then we have to talk about attach and detach the two other methods so again if you notice the callbacks here a and b are getting uh, opposite callbacks right a is being destroyed over here as you guys notice and b is being created here when we said replace right so now let's talk about the attach method that we have so i'm gonna again make the fragment transaction here by saying so now when i say transaction dot attach it expects an object over here so which means you have a fragment and you want to make it visible it is assumed that the fragment is invisible and then you're trying to make it visible remember to make it invisible first you have to call detach and then when you want to show it back again to the user you have to call attach so i'm going to fragment attach but first we need to find the fragment right so since we're working with a i'm going to say manager this is going to give me fragment a in our case f1 not equals to null just to be on the safe side i'm going to say f1 transaction dot attach f1 and then I'm going to commit the transaction by saying transaction.commit. 
so for detach I'll be doing the same thing let me again do that step here the same number of steps are gonna be needed here so instead of saying just attach this time I'll simply say frag transaction dot detach f1 so given the fact that you already have a fragment a inside your app you're gonna remove it there's our attach method and our detach method which are very very similar in both the cases just find the fragment either show it or hide it depending on whether it's existent and we could of course put an else condition but I'm not doing that so let's run this so first let's add a fragment a by saying a and as you guys notice the constructive lifecycle gets called for fragment a which is on attach on create create view on activity created I probably haven't put on resume I must have forgotten that but then it will be called and then if I say detach a now the reason why I will say detach a is I do not want to destroy the complete object in other words I want to maintain the objects linking with its activity but instead just hide the fragment a so I'm gonna say detach a over here as you guys notice only on pause on stop on destroy view is called now remember the effect on the screen looks just like you're removing a but here in the lifecycle method if you notice on detach lifecycle callback has not been executed but on the other hand if I see attach again attach a it is shown again by saying on create view on activity created again if you notice on attach method has not been called because on attach and on detach inside the fragments lifecycle are executed when the fragment has been associated or disassociated with the activity but that is not happening when we use the attach and detach methods and that's why those two methods are not being called so now if I say remove a you will notice that it says on pause on stop on destroy or destroy and notice here it says on detach and that's the difference between detaching a fragment and removing a fragment and I hope you guys are clear about that after seeing the lifecycle methods now so that's all for now if you guys have understood something about this please subscribe to my channel comment let me know your thoughts I would love to hear from you guys thanks for watching I'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice day.